Okay, let's install Max. So you download Max. The company that makes it is called Cycling74. Okay, so here we are at the cycling74.com webpage, and you can see there's a link right at the top to download Max. So I'll click on that. It figured out that I'm running Mac OS X, and I'm gonna click this great big yellow button, and it started to download. So here's the downloads window. It's gonna take a while. It's a pretty big download. It's about half a gigabyte. Okay, our download is complete. So it's a DMG file. I'm gonna click on it, and it's gonna give me this license agreement. Uh, which of course you're gonna read very carefully, but I've already spent a few weeks reading this earlier, so I'm just gonna scroll through it and click on agree right here. So it's opening the DMG file, it's verifying, wanna make sure I got good quality stuff. It's checking. Look, connect anything, just like I said. So that's all there is to it. This is the Max application, and this is a uh, alias to my applications folder on this machine, so I'm just gonna drag it over there, and it's gonna make a copy out of this uh, virtual disk image. Um, now I notice it's 1.21 gigabytes, so uh, somehow it inflated quite a bit from the 500 megabyte download. And there it is, now it's in my applications folder, so if I double click this, I see all my applications, and there it is, Max 7. So I'm gonna put that right in my dock, right here so I can access it easily. So Max is installed, so I can close my applications, I can close this, I'm gonna eject this virtual disk and save some disk space. I'm also gonna throw it away in the trash. I'm gonna close my web browser. And now for the moment of truth, I'm gonna open Max. Yes, I meant to download it from the internet. I do wanna open it. And here's the Max console. We'll talk about this a little bit later, so I'm just gonna close it for now. Max has this nice welcome screen. Uh, it can give you a tour. Uh, I personally know all about it, but I recommend when you get to here, um, click on this sure why not, and it'll uh, give you a nice uh, uh, introduction to Max. But uh, I know all about it, that's why I'm teaching this class, so uh, I'm gonna close that. Okay, success, we have installed Max on that Macintosh. Uh, just for uh, comparison's sake, uh, we're also gonna go through this same process on a Windows machine. Okay, so here's a web browser. I'm gonna enter in cycling74.com, and it's gonna take us to the web page. And again, I'm gonna click on this Download Max icon right from the front. And this time it is noticed that I am on Windows and it's offering me either a 32-bit version or a 64-bit version of the software. I'm gonna select 64-bit. If your download does not begin in five seconds, you can download Max manually, so let's do that. So just to be safe, we're gonna save this zip file. So there it is. Downloading, 69% done. A few minutes to go. Okay, so the download's complete. Windows is running a security scan. Make sure there's no problems with this Max uh, installer zip file. So let's go take a look at it. So there's my zip file. I'm gonna double click it. And that opens. And here's the Windows installer package. So I'm gonna select the installer package and I'm gonna click Extract. And so here's the installer. So there's this nice setup wizard. So I'm gonna say next. So here's the uh, software agreement. So it's basically saying that we get to use Max and uh, if it could be a subscription or it could be a full on purchase. Um, you don't need to own Max to run it um, you are responsible for anything that you do with the software. There are certain uh, legal restrictions. There's some technical support. Uh, Cycling 74 has quite good technical support, actually, um, et cetera. These are all very standard things that you see in these kinds of license agreements. So I'm gonna say accept and next. 
And it's suggesting that we put them in the Program Files folder, which is where Windows likes to have uh, applications installed. And it's making a folder inside that called Cycling74, again, the name of the company that makes Macs. And inside that, a folder called Mac7. That's good. So I'm going to say Next. And we're ready to install. So here we go. Click Install. And we'll just wait a little while. Do you want to allow it? Yes, I downloaded it from the internet. I meant to do that. Yes. So it's validating the install just like it did on OS X. Nice to have a nice valid piece of software installed. And uh, there's some other stuff. Well, sure, we can close those. I didn't even want to have those open anyway. Okay, so Max is finished. So I'm going to click this Finish button to exit the Setup Wizard. And it uh, looks like we have to restart. So we're going to do that. Okay, so now Max is installed. So we just have to double click to launch the application. So let's do that and we'll get started using Max. And we're just going to go straight to making a new patch right here. So under the File menu, there's this option New Patcher. So this is what a blank Max patch looks like. And we have not yet uh, authorized or even started the free trial of Max. So it's giving me this uh, slightly alarming color of green here in caps, trial not started, saving disabled. So uh, once we make a masterpiece in here, uh, we're going to have to start the 30-day free trial period in order to be able to save our work uh, or else authorize it in a more permanent uh, way. Uh, so let's look around the outside. So first of all, this big uh, empty space in the middle is where your program is going to go. Along the top, here's a zoom that's showing uh, we can zoom in and out to magnify the Max Patch. These are a bunch of things that you might normally put into a Max Patch. Um, so here's a very simple object called a button. Uh, it's actually a category of objects. There's a bunch of different kinds of buttons. We'll take the absolute simplest button here called button. And we can click it and drag it in here. And now we have a button. And we can click and move it around. I can resize it. I can make another button and put it in here. Notice that in this window, it says button. That's the name of it. And then in parentheses, it says B. So that's the keyboard shortcut. I don't need to have, I don't need to use the mouse. I can just press the B on my keyboard and it inserts a button on the screen. I can put a lot of them. I can make a whole like artwork out of buttons here. So now I've got a lot of buttons on my screen. I can click and drag to multiply select them. And then now that I have them all selected, I could move them around or I could resize all of them by grabbing on one of them. Wow, that's looking really good. And I can hit delete to delete all of them. So now we're back to two buttons. Uh, next thing that you're going to need to do all the time after you put objects in your patch, you're going to need to connect them to each other. So I'm going to notice how as I mouse over this uh, little circle on the bottom, actually let's make this bigger so you can see it better. Zoom in. Notice that after having zoomed, it went off the screen. So a lot of the things I often do is I hit Command A to select all. Whoa, I don't even know what I hit there. That made it really big. Oh, I've zoomed in even further. Let's go to 200. So uh, Command A, select all, and then you can drag things back and forth and get them back on the window. Even though this patch doesn't have any objects over here in the left edge of it, you can still zoom in to that area with no objects. So that's why uh, we can scroll into a zone where we don't see any objects. So now I've got my two buttons. When I mouse over this thing on the bottom, it highlights and it gives me a little uh, suggestion text, button, output received message as a bang. So this is the outlet of the patch. This is an important general aspect of Max programming. Almost every single object that you use in Max has outlets and or inlets. So on the top are the inlets, on the bottom are the outlets, and you can click and drag either from the outlet 
to an inlet. Notice now that I'm clicking and dragging, it's giving me this uh, cool curved spliny cord as I move around. And there's only one inlet uh, that it's suggesting. So notice how it's highlighting in red right here. It's suggesting that I could uh, let go of the mouse and drop this connection onto there. So I will do that. And now I've made a connection. It gave me a little jiggly thing. And so now these objects are connected. And this patch cord is going to keep them connected even as I move the objects around. So next thing I want to draw your attention to, right down here, this is like a little padlock. It says lock. And if I click it, it goes locked. So the patch can either be unlocked or locked. When the patch is unlocked, all these things are on the outside. This is the edit mode. This is the mode where you're adding new objects, drawing connections, etc. When you lock the patch, then this is the mode where you're interacting with it. So if the patch is unlocked and I click on this button, then it selects. If the patch is locked and I click on this button, then I get the amazing graphical behavior of this object, which is to show me that I clicked on it. If I click on this one, it not only lights up to show that it was clicked, but it makes this one light up. So that's what's happening through this connection. This object, this button, is outputting a message. The message is actually called bang, that is going down this uh, patch cord into this other object. So when I click here, it makes something happen down there. So that is basically what Max Programming is all about. You put objects in your patch, and you connect them together. So there's a bunch of other shortcuts. Command E goes between edit and non-edit. Or you can even command click in the background of your patch to toggle between edit and non-edit. So that, in extremely brief, is what Max Programming is all about. You put objects into your patch, and you connect them together with patch cords. In the next lesson, we'll make a real patch that does something useful.